Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm doing a, a video upon a request. Someone sent me a uh, uh, a request as far as identifying uh, a dissociation reaction, uh, telling when a compound is soluble and insoluble. So I figured this would be a good good problem to go over. Well, first of all, before you can even uh, begin doing these problems, you got to have a the solubility rules memorized or at least have a set of rules. Well, for my high school class, uh, I just have them to uh, have this sheet uh, if it's the general class, but if it's like the honors class or an AP class, I require them to memorize these solubility rules. So let's uh, look at this as far as the directions. They want us to, in this column, tell if it's soluble or insoluble. S for soluble, insoluble for IS. And if it has a uh, a S here, which means it's soluble, you write a uh, dissociation reaction. But if it's insoluble, uh, you just put a dash, or you can write uh, NR, I guess, for no reaction. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> well, first thing I would suggest is identifying everything as soluble or insoluble. So let's look at this. This is calcium sulfate. Let's look at the solubility rules. Uh, according to the solubil solubility rules upon uh, sulfates, here is SO4-2, it says that all sulfates are soluble, unless it's got one of these with it. Well, I see CA right there, and according to that rule, then, this thing is insoluble. So I'm going to write IS here. Okay, IS for insoluble. Uh, once again, you can check and make sure that I did that, did that correctly. It says all sulfates are soluble. Uh, unless it's one, two, three, four, five, one of these five. Okay, so I wrote IS, and that's correct. So let's go back and look at the next one. Now you see this NH4 here? That's ammonium. Anytime you have ammonium, ammonium is always soluble. Okay, and this is ammonium carbonate. But if you want to look at the solubility rules and make sure uh, what it says about carbonates. Well, it says all carbonates. Um, are insoluble unless it's got something from group 1 and NH4. Well, there's the NH4. If it's got NH4 with it, it's going to be soluble. So this thing is soluble. So let's put an S here for soluble. And th the only thing that makes this carbonate, uh, which is the Cl3, the only thing that makes the entire compound soluble is the NH4. So if you see NH4, realize that that is soluble. Anything in column number one on the periodic table uh, is soluble along with NH4. Okay. Now, check this one out. This has NO3 in it. That's a nitrate. Well, something else that's easy to memorize that all nitrates are soluble. But if you don't know that, look at your solubility rules. It says all nitrates, chlorates, perchlorates, acetates are soluble. Enough said. <laughs> so, S for soluble. Okay. Now, uh, this is the metal oxide. Uh, the, actually, this is chromium-3 oxide. Let's see what it says about metal oxides. Uh, well, let's see. Oxides. Here we go. All oxides are insoluble unless it's from group 1. Imagine that. Or it's got NH4 with it. Or if it's one of these three here. Um, let's go back and look see which one we had. We got chromium. And chromium is not one of these, so this thing is insoluble. Okay, so let's write uh, IS there, insoluble. And finally, the last one. Hey, this thing right here is an acetate. Okay, uh, the reason I know a lot of these is well, one, I teach chemistry and I've been doing it for years now, but um, just knowing your polyatomic ions will help you a lot in here. Okay. So anyway, um, looking at this, this acetate is soluble. All acetates are soluble. Because remember, at the top of our rules, it says that all acetates are soluble. So this is an S for soluble. Okay. Now, once again, what made uh, this one soluble was simply the uh, let me change the color to orange was simply the NH4 made this one soluble. On this one, the NO3 made it soluble, and the acetate down here made this one soluble. 
So really knowing just those few simple rules can help you. Anyway, um, as far as uh, answering the next part of this question about dissociation reaction, we need to break apart uh, anything that has an S. So if it's insoluble, you can just put a slash through here, or you can write NR, that's fine, no reaction, you know, but I'm just going to put a dash for, you know, because these do not dissociate. Anyway, um, soluble, uh, try to break apart the soluble ones, break them into ions. Well, let's look here. Uh, notice that this NH4 is in a set of parentheses. That's a big hint that it's on the back of your periodic table. Uh, you know, the list of ions that I give my students, they're on my website, whoolhigh.com. Uh, just go on there and you can find them if you need to, and I'll send you the link if you ask. Uh, but anyway, notice that we have two NH4s here. There's the two, little b subscript two, two NH4s. So I'm going to write two NH4, NH4. Now, if you have your charges memorized, the charge on NH4 is plus one. So I'm going to put plus one here. Now, if you do not write the AQ here, uh, it's understood in my class that it's aqueous because you're, you're breaking it apart into ions. So it, it's pretty obvious that it's aqueous. But uh, some professors require you to write aqueous on the things that break apart. Others, you know, do not. And I'm one of those that do not. But if you wanted to write AQ here, that's fine. If you want to write AQ, AQ, and AQ on that, that's fine. Okay, anyway, aqueous just means it will dissociate, break into ions into, you know, water. Anyway, I'm going to put a plus here. And then, as far as CO3s, I've got only one of those. So I'm going to write CO3 here. And if you do not know the charge of CO3, it's on the back of your periodic table, at least the ones that I give my students, like I said, the charge is negative 2. Now, once again, I've discussed in other videos, I know that in a lot of books they don't write the 1s on plus 1s, and that's fine. And that they write the two first, then the negative second. I, I've told all of you how much I think that just irritates me. Uh, even though I'm, a, you know, a chemistry teacher, a chemist, and everything, it just irritates me that they they write two negative. That's that's just me. But anyway, uh, if you don't really realize where this two came from, you can actually look at the formula and see the two right here. It, it came diagonally down. Remember that from writing the. Uh, equations of metallic compounds, ionic compounds, and whatnot. Anyway, let's go back to the next one. Uh, Fe, whoo, man, there's a bunch of different Fe's out there. <laughs> uh, so you have to be careful. But notice that as far as how many Fe's there are here, there's only one. So you don't have to write the one. You know, it's kind of silly that you do, but I'll write it there since this is a tutorial. But ones are understood. You do not have to write them. Now the charge, let's just say I'm not f so for sure if it's, a say, a 1 or 2 or a 3. I'm just going to wait on that. That'd be fine. Okay, put a plus here. Now, how many NO3s are in this problem? I see two. See the NO3 that I've underlined in orange here? Uh, this 2 tells me that I've got two of those NO3s, so I'm going to write two NO3s here. Now, let's go ahead and get those charges uh, straightened out. Now, NO3 is on the back of your periodic table, and if you look, you'll notice that NO3 always has a charge of negative 1. Now, if you look, there is a 1 behind the Fe. There's not a number there, so you know there's a 1. That 1 belonged to the NO3, so this 2 belongs to the Fe then. Okay, if you don't remember this, go back and watch the tutorial on uh, writing ionic compounds and metallic compounds. Anyway, that charge is plus 2 on the iron, so that's iron 2 nitrate. Like I said, if you write 2 plus, that's fine. If you write uh, plus 2, that's fine as well. And since this was soluble, we really should write aqueous here and aqueous here. But like I said, it's understood to me that you break this into ions and you're telling me that it's dissociated, that it's broken into ions. But some teachers are really picky on that. All right, anyway, aluminum. Uh, there's only one aluminum there, so I'll write one AL. And let's just say, once again, you're not for sure of the charges on the metals. That's fine. And you can always wait until you get the, uh, the anion. That's the second one. Okay, now here's our group. That's an acetate ion. And if you look it up, uh, you, 
you'll find its charge. But how many do we have of these acetates? Well, there's a three behind here. It's a good indication that when you have parentheses and a number behind it, that's going to always tell you how many of those ions you have. And in this one, we have three. So that's three C2s. I really need to get something more than just a mouse. C2, H3, O2. And if you look on the back of your periodic table, you'll see the charge of the acetate ion is always negative 1. So the, there's a 1 behind the AL right here because there's not a number there. 1's are understood. Remember, you do not have to write 1's. This 1 belongs to the acetate ion. So guess who this 3 belongs to then? Yes, right. Yes, that's correct. The aluminum. That's right. Plus 3. Now, you can also tell uh, the charge of aluminum on the periodic table. It's in column 13. Therefore, a metal that's in that column normally has a charge of plus 3 when it forms an ion. Anyway, um, I hope the tutorial was helpful. Just like I said, uh, just make sure that you uh, please your uh, chemistry teacher, your professor, that you give them uh, uh, a quiz if they want it. And as far as with me, you know, like I said, I, I'm fine with you just writing it like that. But anyway, um, you know, if you uh, if you need more than this, you know, then I guess you can look back at, at some other videos that I've done and uh, on ionic and anionic equations and I'll help you. Uh, but technically since this wanted the reaction, we should write the uh, uh, the compound here and then draw an arrow showing it how it was broken down. You know, but you know, um, just trying to get this video out really quickly so the person that requested it can uh, watch it and anyway like I said this would be right after that arrow so anyway I uh, hope that this was helpful and informative and sorry I rambled and everything I've, I've just got a head cold and I'm congested and stuff anyway y'all have a good uh, night and just watch the video thank you